Hello and welcome to a, a brand new video, brand new series, brand new Football Manager video. I've never done anything like this before. Um, I found a uh, FM Scout database um, on their website. I'll link it in the description. Um, solely influenced by the phenomenal HBO series Chernobyl that's been on recently, whereby we re-take over FC Pripyat. Well, not, not so much retake over they they disbanded um shortly before the uh terrible nuclear disaster that uh, obviously is well documented um and and, and now a, a team has been taken out of the ukrainian second division and fc pripyat is now taking their place so welcome um, this is going to be a very scatter, scatterbrained uh, introductory video. I'm going to take you through the, the team itself, the expectations, the division we find ourselves in, um, what our youth setup looks like, all that kind of good stuff. And then in the following video, we uh, will look at some progress that we make in and maybe a game or two. So without further ado, without further ado, let's look at the squad. So, oh, for God's sake, it's given me the induction, hasn't it? I thought, uh, it's because, I, I, basically, I've just created a brand new profile for this because the other one had my name in it, and, you know, I'm not ready for that kind of fame yet. So, um, uh, this the, the, it's going to probably throw up a few induction bits here and there, but we'll just skip over that. I've actually been playing the game since Championship Manager 97-98, um, when I was, you know, in, in, in my early youth. So, uh, I think I was about, I think I was about seven or eight, uh, when that game first came out. I've played pretty much every uh, iteration of the game since. So this is the team, <clears throat> as I keep going off on a tangent all the time. Um, first, before we go any further, I just wanted to quick give a quick shout out <clears throat> to the main inspiration behind this um, video is, uh, and I'm going to probably butcher his name, but he butchers every name that he pronounces anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but Loki Doki, <laughs> or Loki Doki, I don't know, I'm sure he's probably mentioned it once or twice in the past. Um, if you can hear stuff going on in the background, the, I'm, I'm, I'm on the second floor of my house, and there's, uh, there's, a, there's a road, like, literally 10 foot away from me, if you like, so uh, it's also bin day, so we expect to probably hear the bin men um, in the background as well. But I think they've just been and gone actually, so hopefully they won't they won't disturb us any further. Um, so yeah, the team um, overall. The I'm sorry, uh, yeah. So before we go into the team, uh, the view itself is really good. Um, I've never actually before this actual version of Football Manager. It shame shames me to say I never actually played around with the view too much. But I found that this one that is used um, is actually really good, really insightful. Gives you a lot of good uh, information. Uh, and helps you organise your team a little bit better, finds out where the cracks are uh, and what you need to uh, to do to fix them as well. But uh, if we just sort by ability real quickly, we've got uh, we've we've got we've got a little bit a little bit of talent. Um, no more paying no more than forty pound a week. So that seems like the upper echelons of what we can what we can afford. It, I haven't checked the finances out too in, in in any great detail yet, but we'll have a look at that shortly as well before the end of the video. Um, so the first person to uh, notice here is a chap called Oleg Osadchi. Now I'm gonna butcher all these Ukrainian um, pronunciations, so um, I probably will go down. Um, and, and set nicknames for some of them as well. For instance, straight off the bat, Oleg has to be called uh, Meerkat because that is self-explanatory. If you're familiar with uh, advertisements on British TV, you'll know that Oleg is the name of a Meerkat from a certain insurance comparison uh, company. So um, Meerkat, um, let's go back into him. They're all regions. Again, no actual players here. Um, He's, he seems quite good for his for his value and his and, he, and his wage. Twenty seven, so he's in the prime of his life. Um, plays as a winger or uh, behind the striker as a number ten. Uh, crossing's not great. Dribbling's okay. First touch is okay. Passing and techniques all right. Off the ball, acceleration is really good. Pace is good. Agility. Uh, so good physical stats all round. Really happy with that. And that's probably what bumped his uh, current ability up so much. Free kick taking well. Um, as it stands, there probably isn't going to be anyone better in my team to to take free kicks, so he'll he'll be on them as well. I expect I expect him to be in our team for a good couple of years here as we as we look to build, um, especially with some of these stats as well. Although if he does drop off um, fairly quickly, um, as like I say, in a couple of years' time we'll be approaching thirty, and then maybe we might start to see a bit of a decline. But hopefully not. So uh, yeah, that's that's Meerkat. Uh, we also have Yuri 
<laughs> we also have Yuri Joy Shluk Shluk. Um, twenty-four. So not not quite in his prime yet. Um, I get him forty pound a week up until the end of the year. Left foot's very strong. Right foot's reasonable. And he's a ball-winning midfielder, defensive midfielder. Plays at the back. Um, in, sorry, he plays in the front of a, a, a front of a back four. Good tackling, good work rate, teamwork. He seems like he might make a good anchorman or half back. Probably more a half back than anything else. Although his his mental stats aren't great. I actually might just play him as a defensive midfielder. Um, but already this 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 team's already starting to uh, kind of shape itself a little bit based off the uh, the first couple of players that we've seen. Uh, Artem Rudnitsky, Rudnitsky, Rudnitsky. Yeah, Nitsky. Uh Good crossing, dribbling. Well, I say good. Uh, compar comparing to the rest of my team so far that I've seen, it's it's bloody brilliant. Uh, good acceleration. Just 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 your, just your standard winger, basically. Could probably cut it at a, at a League One standard if you were looking at an English um, league as well. Uh, I'll come into the nations that are involved in this database as well as England isn't one of them, and I'll go into reasons for that um, shortly as well. Um, so that's that's five and four and a half stars that we've got here. I'll cover off the kind of the five star potentials at most. So we'll go down to we'll go down to here. So uh, next on the list anyway is Yaroslav Aksyonov. Yaroslav Aksyonov seems to be our best uh, our best up front footballer. <laughs> I don't know why I've just said it like that. Up oh, from football. Uh, I bet that was the bin men, by the way, if you heard that. Um, striker, best striker that we've got. Acceleration's good. Anticipation, composure. Yeah, he's just your standard. He's just your poor man's Michael Owen, really, isn't he? Back in the day when Michael Owen had a turn of pace, not not when he uh, tore his anterior cruciate ligament against Sweden. Rough times, rough memories. Um, so he's probably going to be playing up front for us to begin with. Um, and then finally, I suppose it's probably best to look at these two as well, and, we'll, and then, we'll, then we'll stop there. I mean, in between episodes, I will be going through this team myself in a bit more detail, um, trying to weed out who, who's good and who isn't. Um, so uh, here's Os Ostap Shevchuk. Uh, kind of a dec half-decent um, centre-back. Headed not great, but his marking and tackling is okay. Position is good. Aggression. Oh, God, he's an angry fella. Um... 24, so uh, his current ability, you know, it says that he's got a bit of room to grow. Uh, strength and jumping reach is pretty good as well. So I think he would be uh, someone who sticks in our team um, for some time as well. One thing to probably mention out of all this as well, though, is that the, um, and this is as far as I understand it, but the ability and potential star rating that you get is relative to your team and your team only. It doesn't. It's not a reflection on the rest of the league as well. So, you know, if all your team's terrible and they're all four stars, then you get someone who's slightly better it might be a five star and you might think well fantastic but uh, you know in the grand scheme of things you, you know it's probably still not very good um, and finally we've got uh, Andre Kachetkov Kachetkov Andre Kachetkov um, again oh god it's another another number 10 I might I might have to oh, I'm going to have to have a serious think about the formation that I'm going to play here because I've got some good half decent players I feel but if they're all playing in similar positions then uh, one or two things are going to happen whether I'm going to overload certain positions and, and, and risk it elsewhere which is going to cause me to probably lose more games than win anyway and secondly um, I could end up actually annoying a lot of these players who uh, um, for instance he says he's a, he's a first teamer but I already know that my best player is a number 10 so the chances are he's not going to get much time um, much game time either apart from maybe the cup competition or or, um, or you know um rotational risk and all that kind of stuff so they're, they're, they're really the, the the biggest ones I suppose because um, I've already covered off a right midfielder there's not really much point going any further down they're not going to be any better are they so so that's the squad <clears throat> one thing that's already just struck me as um, clearly obvious here is that I don't actually have any central midfielders whatsoever it looks like I'm going to have to try and purchase or you know on a free or a loan or if I've got any money which I'll check in a second um some good central midfielders because I want to say I want to say it's thin, but it's not even thin; it's non-existent. So, so that 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 needs some that needs to be uh, seriously looked at. So, um, let's look at the finances. Okay, okay, wow, I was not expecting such high numbers. So this actually gives me a a, a bit of hope, really. So transfer budget's two hundred k. 
Seventy uh, percent of the transfer re revenue is made available, which is good to know as well, because I think there's a fair bit of deadwood that we need to shift out. Current spending is nothing compared to the wage budget. Now, the wage budget for for me isn't going to <clears throat> come anywhere near to that, at least for the time being, because um, just because it's there doesn't mean you should spend it. Because I think what I want to do is 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 make sure I've got as much money as possible to give myself better chances of improving facilities. Um, saving up to sign better players when they become available, look at securing end of contracts, that kind of thing as well. Maybe the youth intakes as well from uh, from around from around the world. Now, just based on that as well, actually, I don't know how I can actually show this within within the game itself, but at the start, I, in terms of countries that you could manage within and that are going to be a part of this save, I made them all countries that are um, around the Ukrainian border with the exception of Moldova because they don't actually have uh, a default <clears throat> league in this in the game obviously there's probably custom database set there as well but I wasn't going to go to that length as well but you know you've got the likes of Romania Belarus Russia um, Slovakia etc so on and so forth so I'm hoping that's going to give me a bit of a broader range of of, um, of, of, of a scouting area as well to look in and look in as well so whilst we're on this screen anyway let's have a look at the league table itself um, we're in the Persia Liga, which is basically the second division. The the so uh, if you put it in, if you put it in English football context, uh, we're in the Championship, and there is only two divisions anyway. So um, I don't know, call it Premier League and Division One, like the old school Division One, um, before it got renamed to the Championship. Um, holders are Arsenal, but Arsenal Kiev. Um, not many. I don't recognise any teams from this, and I'm quite, I'm quite, um, I've been playing Championship Manager slash Foot Manager for so long that most teams just kind of come to you, you know, in a, in a sort of I don't know about you, but I recognise your name kind of way. None of these apart from one, which is Dnipro, um, and yeah, I was just wanting to double check, that, I just wanted to double check that it wasn't like a Dnipro B team because of the dash one, but it, it's not. It looks like it's their their full team because. Okay, they've got one player who is who command, commands my entire wage budget. Sergi Kravchenko. So, uh, yeah, straight away we're starting to see some levels here, I think. All right, so if we have a quick look at the season preview, we'll see where we... Okay, so we know where we stand. Um, Dnipro are actually um, odds on favourite to go... I think back back up. They may have been relegated last season. Maybe I'm not quite sure what the the P means. It means pr promoted. Were they promoted. Were they promoted from the division below last season? I'm guessing. And and Zerka here were relegated from the top division. Maybe I don't know. I I, I I probably will never even work that out. But that that's kind of what I'm assuming from here. And um, we're actually joint last to uh, to win the league alongside Cobra Cobra. Cobra, we'll say Cobra. That's a class logo. I love that. Um, so they seem very much similar to us as well in terms of wage structure and the rest of it. Um, so we're actually not actually holding out much hope, but that's a good thing because if I think if I'm coming into this save with no knowledge of Ukrainian football, no knowledge of the the, the teams around me, the styles of play, or anything like in the history or anything like that, then me being Expected to get relegated means that there's less pressure on me, the players, and and everything else as well. So let's have a look at the. What, so one of the things to notice here is just the kind of the promotion and relegation structure in the game as well. So um, it seems like one goes up automatically, second and third go into some kind of relegation, promotion relegation playoff. I'm guessing kind of similar to the Scottish leagues, which yeah, it's very similar, very similar um, to what they do as well. Now four teams get relegated. Four teams get relegated from this division out of sixteen. So that's a fourth at maths. Yeah, that's a fourth, isn't it? Yeah, it's a quarter. That's a quarter of the league get relegated. I'm not yeah, I don't know why <laughs> my maths has seriously failed me then. But yeah, a fourth a, a quarter of the league get relegated. That's pressure. I don't know who they get. I don't know how they get relegated because there's no division below me. But I'm guessing there's other there's other um, teams that would then come up in in, in their place. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, for, first first season um, target is to finish twelfth, essentially, by hook or by crook. Um, if we look at the Premier League, as it's no, well Premier Liga, but we're going to call it the Premier League. A um, couple of teams off the bat, which is you know should be fairly common to anyone who follows football of any kind of relative um, frequency is uh, Shakhtar Donetsk and uh, Dinamo Kiev. Shakhtar of course having such a heavy footprint in Brazil as you can see here um, they always seem to go and pluck some um, talented players from uh, from the Brazilian leagues uh, yeah this 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 is this is the aspiration boys I mean this is this is phenomenal um, so that's that I mean for us, you know, there, there's no comparison. We're, we're talking, we're talking seasons upon seasons of, of aspiration to get anywhere close. But um, we'll, we'll think we'll leave it there for the time being. I don't think there's much else to really to cover at this point. I suppose we can take a quick look at the staff. That's another thing to skip. Oh God, bear with me a second. I should really skip through all of this, really, shouldn't I? Um, okay. Well, I understand, but, but. Okay, let, 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 let's 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 just quickly sort this out. Uh, we'll s I'll handle the press conferences. Don't worry about that. The tunnel interviews. I'll recruit the staff. Thank you very much. And decide if all staff should be given new contract. I'll, I'll handle that as well. Okay, yeah, finish. Yeah, like I said, the induction thing is something I'm going to have to sort out bef before the next video because I don't want to keep getting caught and stuck um, like that. For, so um, it's very bare bones. This this uh, backroom staff here. So we've got one assistant manager. Well, you can only have one assistant manager, but here he is. Barely. Um, yeah, it's just it's, it feels like he's someone that I don't want around for very long. Um, so yeah, he's probably still got a bit of radiation damage or something. Um, Chief scouts. <sighs> My chief scout isn't even worth looking at. He's gonna have to go as well. And um, my head physio, oh Christ, he is also terrible. Okay, so a um, couple of main objectives then before the start of the next video at least is start to scout or at least sign or at least scout some central midfielders. To do that, I need to get a new scout. Um, I also need to get a new physiotherapist. I also need to get a new assistant manager. Um, let's have a quick look at who we, how it, it, the start of the season is going to pan out. Because what I'm hoping is that the... We don't worry about the friendlies, but at the the end of the next video, we want to at least play the first game of the season, which oh god, is Dnipro, who are favourites to actually go up from the division, and we're away from home as well. So, I mean, baptism of fire. I mean, I suppose there's, I suppose there's certain elements to that which are actually positive because you get the game out of the way before. Um, before it becomes really psychological in terms of we need to win this game, we need to get a certain amount of points from the next amount of games, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, we're also going to need to work out how we're going to make some money in this game as well. I mean, we've got to secure finances, but um, I'm pretty sure you don't actually get anything from just winning games in the league. That'd be that'd be pretty silly. Um, but what about what about the the there's a cup? I'm sure there is. There must be. Yeah, Kubok. Ukrainian, which I'm, I'm guessing is probably like FA Cup. Um, it seems here that you don't get anything. Winners qualify for the first round. The first round of what? Oh, sorry. Second preliminary round. So that's what we're going to be going into, I think. Let's have a quick look. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yes, we start at the second preliminary round. So if we, if we win that, um, we go into the first round and we still don't get any money if we get past that one. Second round, we don't get any money there either. Quarter final, uh, nope, no, nothing there. Semi final, uh, no, nope. and final. Right, am I looking? Oh no, here we go. Winners prize money, hundred k. Um, oh, so the lower division team plays at home. I quite like that. That's that's quite a good rule. We should we should have that. We sh that should be. That should be something that gets put into the FA Cup and League Cup. Especially the FA Cup because you get a lot of smaller teams who, you know, get a couple of decent results in the first and second rounds and then you get to the final third round. It's like, we've drawn Manchester United at Old Trafford and it's like, you know, it's sometimes United in that, in that example would then give some of the gate receipts. But 
it'd be better if it was at the, at the lower team's home ground so they could get a massive gate receipt. And that kind of thing would then carry you through, you know, a, a season at least, or help you invest into having a better season um, if managed correctly the next year. But um, it's not great, is it, that you don't get anything unless you win the competition? Are you meant to make money? Oh, here's another one. The super Kabok Ukraini. Um... Oh that, wait, yeah. So that's just that's just the their version of um, the charity shield, isn't it? Which is the the winner of the cup versus the winner of the league. Basically, it's going to be Shakhtar versus Dynamo Kiev, isn't it? I'm guessing. Uh, and then you've got the uh, under twenty one. So there's not going to be much to worry about there anyway. So um, I suppose that's it for the time being. Obviously, I've got to go through all the tactics and training and all that stuff. But um, obviously, I need a I need a I need a, sorry I need a backroom staff to be able to do that first of all. Um, I'm sure there's probably some good things in the under 21s and under 19s as well, maybe to earmark for the future. But we'll leave it there for the time being, my friends. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the concept of the series and join us for the next video. Until then, take care.